Good morning and welcome to another episode of Crime Page of Bonnie Dustin. Look at that nice termite mound up there. Today I'm coming to you from just off the side of the road in the uh, south coast of uh, the nice Finbos. Finbos in the south coast of South Africa, just east of Cape Town. Look at those nice, uh, those ni my nice coastal mountains right there. Climate is very similar to that of coastal northern California. We got the Cape Fold Belt behind us. We're looking uh, south right now. We're gonna start off with uh, this uh, species in a family, Bruniaceae. Look at those, look at those capitate flower heads right there. Ah, oh! Brunia, that jula floris, this guy right here, those little white golf balls, those little white knobs. Those are the fruits. This thing flowers uh, in the winter, basically around June. And then those knobs stay on a plant uh, waiting for a fire to come true. Fire comes true. Uh, they burn, release their seed, drop the seeds into the recently burned landscape, and boom, you get a new generation. Over here, we got a species of a uh, lobelioid. The genus is Scyphia. Okay, quite similar to uh, the lobelias. You can look at that calyx. But when you cut them open and you look inside, they don't have a fused anther to them, okay? Their anthers and their filaments, the whole stamens, uh, are free. Quite a species-rich genus. Oh, uh, this is a nice one. This is Sororia fasciflora from uh, the Protea family Proteaceae. All the members of the genus Sororia are pretty low-growing shrubs. Uh, you can see those flowers up there, those beautiful pink and cream colored pollinated by flies. Interesting thing about this is the seeds have eliosomes on them, uh, which are ant spread, little fleshy coverings. So the ants eat the fleshy coverings and then stash the seed underground. And then when conditions are right, the seed germinates. Oh, you want you, you get a nice close up money shot of that flower. Look at each one of those little pink tubes is a flower composed of four valvate sepals. Again, that unfurl, the anthers are on the end of them. When they unfurl, those little pollen presenters come out and the pollen presenters have pollen on them from those anthers. Now look at these fucking weirdos, these nephalioids, more of the paper daisies. So charismatic in the fin boss, the fain boss. Phanacoma prolifera is this guy right here. Look at those flowers up top, looks pink. Look at the foliage, it looks like a damn juniper. Okay, it looks like some sort of weird conifer. Okay, the paper daisies are really weird. Tribe Nephalia. Look at those papery phyleries, which is why they got their name, paper daisies, right? In the Southern Hemisphere, Tribe Nephalia does some really weird shit. Is in the kit here. Look at that flower. Again, disc flowers. Those are not rays. Those are just the uh, phyleries, the, in, the involucral breaks. So look at that. Everything, on all these unrelated plants, taking the convergent path morphologically of that, those, that ericoid foliage okay look at this this damn paper daisy looking like a juniper okay shortened shortened leaves okay not going to transpire much moisture the ericoid leaves the ericoid habit kind of low growing not too thick i mean it's thick but not too tall look at this goddamn look at dendron look at it so many unrelated plants taking the same habit just from millions of years of evolving and adapting in this environment. Nutrient poor soils, summer drought, but also the nice, uh, the nice mellow coastal fog, the nice mellow coastal influence. Winter rain, summer dry, close to those cold ocean currents. Now, now look at this. This is a pretty common genus. Genus is Burkea. Asteraceae is the family. Chicory subfamily, but Burkea is everywhere. This guy won't be flowering for another two weeks. This is Burkea herbacea, one of many species in the genus. And look, this pink stuff that's everywhere, this guy is just an Erica. Look at those tiny little flowers. Leaves kind of feel papery. See, look, you can see the stigma poking out. Just coming up here is an is a important member of the fine boss. We got a member of the family, Peniaceae, an endemic family here. Here, look at these flowers. Pinea mucronata is this species right here. Flowers are formerous. There's those little white, the, or excuse me, those little yellow knobs. You can see. You got the uh, the uh, decusset leaves right there. 
nice. And then down here, growing close to the ground right there, okay, kind of uh, indistinguishable, we got a member of the genus Clutia. Don't know which one, there's about 90 of them. Used to be in the family Euphorbiaceae, now they're in a, a different one. I think it's Paraceae or some. Anyway, they got some weird uh, secondary chemistry going on. That's about all I could tell you about this one right here. Look at those mountains. You could see that. Just, just cooked marine sediments. Oh. And then right here, we got a real nice member of the Orobankaceae, the family of parasites. Harvea is the genus here. This is Harvea purpurea. Anyway, let's take a close up look at those flowers. You could see just vestigial leaves, no chlorophyll. They don't need it. They're borrowing uh, from the. Uh, one of these and the phaleoids next to them anyway look at those wide open mouths of that zygomorphic flower look there's the star right there and below the star you see four stamens at the two uh two levels two different levels oh look at that there there you go there's a nice money shot there's some beetle now this flower off bastard let me get in there oh bang i've seen i've seen 40 of these coming up at once fucking hey look at this would you look at this Look at this phainacoma. What a fucking weirdo. What a beautiful weirdo. Said that phrase so many times this trip. Look like a goddamn, they do, they look like a goddamn juniper. Some sort of paper daisy conifer. That's <laughs> so weird. Wonder how long they live for. Look at that thickened woody trunk. Look at this protea. Getting ready to flower. God, I, I love it when I do this. There's last year's infructescence. Yeah, this one's a rare one. Protea aspera. Known only from uh, the immediate area. Listed as vulnerable, actually. But look at it, though. Just a little colony. And then here we go. Here's yet another protea, which shouldn't be a surprise. This one actually gets used a lot in, uh, in gardens and horticulture. Here. This is protea repens. Look at that flower. kind of stinks. Look at all those palm presenters going up. The flower's aged a little bit. No, known as sugar bush, and it seems like the sugar went bad. Ugh, kind of smells rank now. They are well past done. Ooh, sticky too. Now, what the fuck are you? Look at this guy. Looks like a leucodendron, right? Looks like he look, looks like it might be leucodendron. All X umbellata is that guy. Been seeing him around quite a bit. That's another weird protea. Oh, here it is in full bloom, full frontal. Look at, oh my God, you got beetles crawling out of there. What's going on, guys? Just using those filaries, those papery filaries as attractants. My God, I love this plant. What a fucking weirdo. Got some nice rocky outcrops now. We got another lobelia, a woody lobelia, a shrub lobelia, of course, with the ericoid leaves, thin lanceolate leaves. Lobelia pinifolia, oh, like a little purple mouth. Those, uh, let's see what it has got the name pinifolia. Look at those leaves. Look at it. No, no leaves on the bottom 80% of the plant just at the tips and of course that pollen presenter like so many of them coming out from in between those two those two top petals that fused anther tube and a pollen presenter lobelioid calyx look how the fucking corolla's hairy what the shit that's a genus that gets around look at all that protea look at it it's like a corn maze of waist high protea and speaking of that family, we got uh, my meaties. My meaties cuculatus. Look at those. Each one of those little fuzzy things is, of course, a, flow a floret, a flower. Each one of those little fuzzy nabs is uh, comprised of four valvate tepals that open. And then you get a little palm presenter. See, like so, with the little red tip. And of course, go through the male phase first, present the pollen, then become uh, become receptive. And look how the bracts, those are just bracts. It's not the actual flower, of course. 
or even the inflorescence, those bracts just become uh, quite uh, notable and conspicuous at the distal ends of each, uh, each stem. You know, to help with getting the pollinators there with the shit. Most likely birds, most likely sunbirds. Proteaceae. Now, then look at this tiny pea, this filiformis pea. Looks like it might be a Latinonis, a fuzzy calyx. Ooh, could also be a sora. Well, no, soralea tends to be larger shrubs. But anyway, look at this. Uh, look at this Erica. Look at it. Wind pollinator. Look at that. Look at all that. Uh, look at all the pollen come off of that. Look at all the, the the jizz, the Erica jizz. Over here we got a lobus stemmen. Don't know what species. Doesn't look like fruticosis. Guess it could be though. Look at Boraginaceae's the family. Look at all the hairs on it. Stiff little hairs. Oh, great genus. Quite a few species in that one, too. A nice pink theme on this whole uh, entire hill. Multiple species. And this lobe is stemming, too. Look, you got a... <laughs> you got a... This is a frequent scene in a fane bus. Got a beetle's ass sticking out of there. Passed out inside there. Like a drunk passed out in a trough urinal. A single flower uh, per, uh, per stem. A single flower per stem. That is, I don't know if that's just the, the time or what. Look at this guy. What the shit? Did he get eaten? Is he dead? What's going on? What's going on, guy? Another Berkeia. But this one, you know, this one looks kind of different from the other ones. Leaf margin's a little different. Look at that involucre going off. Oh, spiky bastards. It's a thithel. You can see it's a thithel. Oh, there's, a, there's guys in there, too. What are you doing in there? Huh? Did you get out? Get out. No, you can hang out in there. It's fine. I'm just, I'm just playing. Now, look at this guy over here. Wiry stem. Easy to miss except for that white flower, that prominent white flower. Remember the iris family? Iridaceae. Looks like a species of Ixia. Look at those three green anthers. Not yet the hissing alternating with those three white style branches. Look at that wiry ass stem. There's a couple basil leaves down there. How about that? Then right here we got a carrot, little wispy carrot. Look at the flowers on this guy. Looks like a species of uh, centella. Let's get up close. Look at look at the flowers on us. Look at it. So you got these these uh, clusters of flowers that are either male, as such, or uh, you know like five male flowers, or a uh, or a flower that's uh, just one female. That ovary. See that one with the ovary right there? Little fruit. Those purple stems too. Again, easy to miss. Wispy. There's another South African endemic genus of pea right here. This is Podaleria. This is Podaleria myrtifolia. I love this genus. Look at that. Look at, the, look at those hairy leaves. Hairy, simple, single leaves. Tend to be uh, beautiful bushes. Another another bush paper, Daisy. Another bush nephalioid. Syncarpha vestida. The whole genus is native to the fane boss. Look at us. Look at it. It's just like a, it's like a little artichoke of uh, papery filaries. Look at those leaves, too. Oh. Kind of like toilet paper. Ooh. Fucking banger. Discoid, little discoid flowers. Imagine what you could do. White sand. The white sand. Nice Erica. Looks like, is it, is it done or is it still gone? It looks like it might still be gone. No. Eh, maybe. Yeah, this phenacoma, I just, I can't get over it. God. What a stunner. Of course, just being a nutrient-poor sand, we got the Drosera coming up. Quite a few of them. Next to an Oxalis right there. Got to compensate for that lack of nitrogen somehow. Two Drosera species. You got Drosera cystiflora as well. Look at those orange anthers. Oh, with the blue... You like the blue? Look at those freaky styles too. Five freaky styles. Get like little snowflakes. Look at this little orange proteaceae. Leucospermum prostratum, another uh, threatened endemic from uh, the region around Betty's Bay to a little bit east. Look at it. Look at those four four yellow teepers. A little flame. Just teeples and pollen presenters. How about that? God damn. 
the leaves just coming right out of the ground. God, what a weird, there's so many fucking weird freaks here. I love it. All of this habitat, all these plants, fire adapted too. What is the burn interval for the fine boss here? Huh? What's that, orchid or uh? I can't even see, it looks like it's done. I mean, just getting on your hand, getting on your hands and knees and crawling around, there's so much stuff. Hiding beneath the shrubbery. Look at this guy. Now this doesn't look like a crassula at all, at least not to me, but it certainly is. Look at those leaves, barely succulent, barely. Anyway, look at those, look, the stigma's poking out of those white corollas, five-lobed stigmas. The, the stamens are inserted within that floral tube. This doesn't smell too bad here. Look at the calyx. A little silly at margin. Look at that. You got a woody stem down there, too. Look at that. What a weirdo. Crassula fascicularis. Nice semi-succulent pea. At least the leaves. The leaves feel semi-succulent. There's those yeller, uh, yellow, uh, yeller. There's those yeller, uh, papilinaceous flowers. You got your banner wings and keel. Indumentum on the stem. Look at those leaves. See what I mean? They're kind of succulent, semi-succulent. Whole flower just glistening in the light, which is now, it's kind of hot and muggy out. Anyway, Aspilatus fusca. Same genus as rooibos tea, huh? Look at all the southern hemisphere spring color. All that leucodendron just dotting the hillsides. Look at this, leucodendron. Leucodendron xanthaconis. Look at the cone bush. This is a male. See how those pollen presenters sticking out? Only known from the southwest coast of the Cape region. Cape Peninsula, Betty's Bay, etc. See, here's a female with that giant, quote, cone on it. Which is actually, again, just an inflorescence. Little stigmas will be poking out of those, each one of those bracts when, it, uh, when it's finally going off when it's in bloom. Unless they're done already now, it don't look like it. But look, look, that whole cone is just covered in tiny hairs. And notice the, le the leaves are a little bit different from the males as well. A little bit bigger. Leucodendron, being a dioecious species, or genus, excuse me, can have a dimorphic vegetation. They're vegetatively dimorphic sometimes, depending on whether plants are male or female. So you got a female right there, male right there. Looks like you got pines up there. Pines are invasive here. Here we go, look at this. Another member of the genus Sororia, the genus colloquially known as spiderheads. Look at those anthers. Oh my God. And those little fuzzy florets. Anyway, this is Sororia elongata, the uh, long stalked spider head. Again, there's the flowers on these, just the inflorescence never never cease to bloom. Look at the leaves down there. Webby, kind of plasticky. Ooh, they're highly divided. Oh, about three feet tall here in the fine boss. What a banger. Look, another one of like five Erica species we've encountered so far on this uh, muggy hike up this mountain. You got guys in there? Or are those the anthers? Oh, looks like those are just the anthers in there. Little green style poking out. A woody subshrub. Perhaps it gets larger. Look, another Syncarpha. Another paper daisy. Amazing what you could do with disc florets and phyleries. Anyway, this is Syncarpha speciosissima. And look at those yellow disc florets. Oh, those attracting phyleries. Got the fuzzy stem nice. Got those fuzzy leaves. Kind of like mullen, like you'd wipe your ass with it. Look at all the hairs on that thing. Jesus Christ, adapted to the summer dry. Then look at that flower head with the, uh, that, oh my God. Look at all those discs, those discs and styles. Use your nectar source right there. Oh, and the bracts, the papery bracts. I love the fucking nephalioids, man. Never get tired of them. And paper daisies, ooh, ooh. And speaking of nephalioids, we got a pink... Metalacia. 
paper daisies. Look at those phyleries. Those pink. That pink is actually phyleries. Those are not ligules. Those are not daisy rays. Again, ericoid leaves. No surprise. That axial surface is a white. Is it the white due to the fuzz? Yeah, you got some fuzz. That's fuzz. As opposed to stomatal wax. And there's those tiny uh, capitulescences. Each one a capitulum. The flowers impossibly tiny. The actual florets themselves impossibly tiny. How many in each uh, pink capitulum? God damn, it's, it's so wild. Who knew that this tribe could do so much, evolutionarily speaking. Goddamn vining lobelias. Goddamn vining lobeliads. Ah, oh, look at the color on this. That is a scythia. That is a nice one too. Look at that goddamn, look, you got, you got, the, you got the pink and the fuchsia, and then you got the purple on that tube, or excuse me, the blue on that tube, the sky blue on that tube. Calyx and stem. Being a nice mahogany color, just clinging to a restio. God, there's a there's a fun family to <laughs> I mean, I love restios, but Jesus Christ, they're quite hard to figure out. I, I haven't even I haven't even bothered with a lot of them. Who's they hiding over there on that goddamn hillside? It's a beautiful nephalioid bastard. So many white phyleries, looking like a thistle. Just like a thistle of white phyleries. When will they open? Look at that. Where where are the actual flower? Where where are the florets buried beneath that uh, phalanx of uh, white phyleries? Look, you got a beetle with his ass in there. Look at it. Where are the actual flowers? I mean, they smell nice. There's something being offered in there. How do you get inside there? Again, those are all just involucral breaks. Here's a fun one to pronounce. Allax umbellata, another member of the Proteaceae, notable in being dioecious, like leucodendron. Not many proteoids are uh, uh, dioecious. There's those male flower heads right there. Those are the male inflorescences. Little spikes. Then right here you got a female, looking like, kind of looking like a leucodendron, looking like a cone bush. Those, uh, when they're ready, those, those bracts open up like a little cup. Coming up on a big old boulder of a uh, Quartz actually looks more like quartzite. We got a, a very bizarre member of the Isoaceae, Oscularia deltoides, another uh, southwestern Cape endemic. Look at those tiny white flowers, those uh, those uh, petaloid staminodes. Anyway, zooming out, look at it, little rock garden plant. Look at it, just occupying this little crevasse, those fleshy, succulent opposite leaf. Look at this guy, Brunia beetle, Trichostetha capensis, just hanging out on a Brasilia. And a member of the family Bruniaceae. Of course, I got, got these things. Actually, smells kind of good. Very pungent, though. Oh, yeah, get it. Get it. What are you doing? You going for the pollen? Huh? Is there much nectar in there? Oh, look at you. So pretty. You got these You get these little dainty snowflake patterns on your back. Get them. Get it. Oh. Gorge yourself. Huh? Like you're at the buffet, you sleaze. God damn. Another Erica. This one quite exquisite. Fuzzy Corollas. Little fascic fascicled uh, ericoid leaves. Look inside my uh, perianth. Oh, look at those anthers. Look at a money shot of those anthers. Forming a little cage around the style. It's so weird that Erica's here only have four petals. I'm used to some, all the members of that family in North America, having five, five fused petals. Yes. God damn it. So swampy. Oh, look at that. Penny AC. It's like pick heaven. Kind of a drag. Every time I walk through stuff like that, I always think I have a pick on my scrotum. Look at this. Look at this drosera, like a subshrub drosera, the woody stem, it's standing about a foot tall. Look, you can see the soil dried out a little bit. Not bad. It's kind of, it's still wet, but it's not baggy. Look at those, look at those spatulate leaves, just covered, oh, covered in the sundew. 
It's a fine one. Does it? Do they? Uh, oh yeah, they do. Look, they wrap around their pl their prey. See that? <laughs> Clasping it, clutching it. Ugh. Jesus. Southern Hemisphere Drosera. A lot of good ones in Australia, too. Anyway, this one's another South Coast endemic. Not only, you're from a relatively small area. God, that woody stem is just crazy. Drosera glabropes is this guy. Look at that thing. Look, this is about two feet tall now. It's a monster. It's a beast of a Drosera. How's that for a carnivore, huh? Look, it's like, it's like a Bruniaceae leucodendron dungeon. Oh, Bruniaceae leucodendron corn maze. Ugh. Oh, I see something pretty interesting. Oh yeah, this is this is quite boggy, quite wet. But it's a species of the uh, proto carnivorous plant. Look at all the drosera. Just god damn it! Look at that. Oh, this is what I was showing you. I got distracted, but that's nice too. Look at that. God damn it! Oh, like little red ribbons, massive ones. Haven't seen that species yet. It's a species of the proto carnivorous plant, Rorigula. Rorigula gorgonius. Look at that. Those leaves, of course, trapping insects, but the plant doesn't actually eat the insects itself. Instead, it relies on uh, the species of a uh, assassin bug. You can see freely moving without getting trapped uh, to eat the insects that it traps and then uh, take a dump and then uh, Rorigula utilizes that nitrogen to compensate for this very poor soil, this waterlogged nutrient poor soil, where Drosera is directly eating the insects. Rorigula is, uh, is just eating shit. This is like the, uh, this is like the G.G. Allen of uh, proto-carnivores. What an amazing plant. God damn. <laughs> and quite thick here too. You could see quite a few of them. A lot of frogs. This is surprising though, because at this spot it's pretty wet, but uh, where we saw the other species, where we saw uh, Rorigula dentata, it was pretty dry. You know, they're just coming up on a protea woodland in completely dry, sandy soil. Massive Erica over there. Drosera slackii. This one's another uh, narrow endemic, not only from the region of carnivorous plant guys. Love this fucking guy. Look at those robust leaves, robust little red rosettes. Oh, those anthocyanin pigments. Look at it. Orders caryophyllales for the Drosera family, Droseraceae. Look at that. Leaves like flypaper. Just riddled with insects. These are not blooming yet. The other species was blooming. Notice the, the leaf margins are entire on these. Kind of hard to tell since they, they're covered in glands. But uh, on the other Rorigula, they had a dentate leaf margin. That's the species name, Rorigula dentata. The pink flowers when they do go off. It's ridiculous. They're just, it is. The leaves feel like flypaper. They're not juicy like the Drosera's. They're just very sticky. Remind me of like a, some of the glandular salvias I've seen. And then let's let's find that. Uh, where's the dam? It's not actually an assassin bug. It's, there you go. It's in the genus uh, Pameridia. Leaf bug is a more appropriate common name. And this species of Pameridia is a uh, is stuck with this plant. Each each species each of the two species of Rorigula has its own species of a uh, insect that can walk on it freely whose uh, feces it eats. 
whose shit it eats. It's like, uh, wasn't there a dick song about that? No, that was shit on me. But, uh, you know, not, without being too crass, it's a pretty ingenious little trick. It's just hard. How much are these bugs shitting? I guess a lot. There's a, there's, it's like an open buffet. So there's enough, there's enough insects to keep them, uh, keep them going, you know, to keep them thriving. You can see it's just right in here with that, uh, with the Bruniaceae, with those guys, with the Leucodendron, with the Erica. God, just, yeah, just a, just a really wet, a really wet, gentle slope on the side of this mountain. There's, there's a raptor over there. I don't know what they're doing. They're having some sort of domestic dispute. It keeps squeaking. There's two of them. I don't know if they're banging or... Oh, yeah, there it is. See it over there? Anyway, so you got to ask yourself, how does something like this, how does something like this evolve? I mean, and obviously it's, it's quite likely been like that for a long time. If each uh, species of plant has its own, each species in the genus has its own species of insect that co-occurs with it. The other species is, I don't know, 100 miles north of here, maybe less. And a different habit, too. Not, not in the wet areas and already blooming. But probably because it's a, a little bit hotter up there. It's kind of, you know, we're a little bit closer to the coast here. It's a little muggy. These goddamn, these leaf bugs, I keep wanting to call them assassin bugs, uh, are really photo shy. Dear sir, know that you died for a greater good, okay? Know that you, I know, I know it may not feel very comforting right now. It was for the cause, sir. Look what, but I gotta ask you though too, why did you stop? What about, what about this seemed like a good idea? What seemed like a good idea to get you there in the first, what was the attractant? Where did the initial idea come from, huh? Because i got to be honest, I don't see, I mean, I'm attracted to this plant, but I don't want to go try and lick it. Is that what you were trying to do? Were you trying to lick the plant? Is it secreting some sort of a pheromone or sugary enzyme? What's going on? Look at that guy. He's just that devious special just waiting for lunch. No, I don't think that's, you could struggle, but I don't think that's going to do you any good. I think it's over, guy. It's for a cause. It's for the greater good. Just, you know, just uh, go peacefully. That's what they do. They got psilocybin therapy, therapy for that. You know? For terminally ill patients to just, you know, be at ease uh, with dying. To go in peace. I know that's not very comforting to them now, but I figured I'd try. What an incredible habitat. What the shit is it? I don't even know. It's just a fucking, it's like some sort of a irid over there. It's a nice leucodendron too. Look at that. Leaves like plastic, foliage like plastic. There's a male inflorescence. See those tepals pulled back and the pollen presenters on? You got your Erica. Penny AC right here. Get your Brasilia everywhere. What a fucking odd symbiosis. What a fucking, what a weird, what a weird and cool plant. This whole, this whole goddamn region is like an evolution classroom. Like an evolution and ecology classroom. God damn. The cape, the cape. South Africa. What a what a marvelous place. I wonder how climate change is going to affect it. Yeah, and it's it's you know I've been complaining complaining about how it's muggy, but it's still much cooler here than where we were. You know we're closer to the ocean. The ocean's just over yonder, whereas behind us to the north, 
Go over those mountain ranges, you're in the rain shadow, it dries out drastically. A little bit further up the hill, pretty thick up here. Probably pretty ticky, gonna have to check. You got a, a penny again, but it's, it looks like a, it's some fruit. Again, with the ericoid leaves, almost like a, kind of like an ericaria, almost. Little decussate pairs of opposite leaves. Another cape endemic family. Yeah, it's fucking thick, man. How do you, Jesus Christ, you know, I might, uh, I might be turning around soon. So speaking of penny AC, here's one of them. You can see there's the, uh, there's the spent uh, flowers already done. Look at a nice little tube, nice little um, uh, papery tube. And here is uh, the flower itself. Saltera sarcocola. What a banger. Look at it again with the uh, imbricate foliage, alternating pairs of opposite leaves. Hey, you got some wax on there. And there's that flower. Kind of looks obscene almost. Four bricks, four little petals. You got the sepals there too. This cape endemic family. What a weirdo. And four little stamens too. There you go. You know, I had to, I had to, I just had to do it. I had to take one of those flowers off. Four flowers in that head total. Maybe sometimes there's more, but there's, there it is. Got four stamens, anthers on the inside. Style coming up between four petals. Very resinous too, extremely resinous. Like molasses at the base of that uh, inflorescence. Stamen's just uh, adding eight to the uh, Corolla right there. God, what a cool family, too. And look at that. Another beautifully polished piece of quartzite with the Oscularia deltoides. The Isoaceous bastard. Just the draping over it. Little Beautiful little rock garden. Pink petaloid staminodes. Yellow anthers. The pink goes well with that mint green, huh? How old is that plant? It's like a goddamn, <laughs> it's like a goddamn mat. Beautiful little matting. Oh, you got teeth on those leaves too. Oh, nice. Got teeth on those succulent leaves. See, Isoacea can do some pretty fantastic stuff. Probably one of the most species rich families in a region. Hiking through this clusterfuck, you know, we came upon this plant. New veg. Haven't seen the veg yet on this guy. Look, you got hairs on those uh, little leaves. And it's, uh, well, now it's in still base, but it used to be in its own family. Retzia. Ah! Retzia capensis. Used to be a Retziaceae. A little tubular flower. How many valves you got on there? Four valves. What the shit? Look at that. Any of them open? None of them open. None of these flowers open. Little four, uh, four valvate the uh, petal bastard. Little, oh, you got a style poking out right there. What a weirdo. Another goddamn Dr. Seuss plant that a fine boss. The fin boss. Yeah, look, so look, that little, that little red two flower just comes out from in between all those, all those tightly, uh, world bricks, leaves, whatever the shit. <laughs> Where are the leaves and where are the bracts? So uh, dissecting a flower here, look at it. It's, it's actually, it's uh, five petals fused together. Look how hairy they are. Look, barely a filament there. Filaments just, uh, the stamens are just adding eight to that corolla. A little bit of purple at the top of each one of those petals. Five fused petals fused into a tube. And again, just poking out from that uh, whirl of leaves and bracts. Plasticky, kind of stiff and plasticky. Sclerophyllith with a little bit of a uh, of fuzz. You like the fuzz, huh? You sick fuck? God, what a great plant. Holy shit. Ah! 
So much in a, so much going on here in a finbos. Okay, and uh, moving on through the thicket, progressing through the thicket, we got some interesting stuff going on here. Leaves like plastic. Look at the uh, anthocyanin pigment on that stem, those nice red pigments. Uh-oh, what's going on? We got something pretty nice. Oh my God, oh my God. Look at that. Ah, oh! Protea sinoroides, the king protea. Look at that, a dinner plate. A dinner plate of an inflorescence consisting of how many, how many hundreds of flowers? Two or three hundred probably? Look at those little brown pollen presenters looking like little needles. Looks like they're almost done. And then as you progress inwards towards the flower, those white, those little uh, white fuzzy rads, which are actually four velvet tepals fused around a pollen presenter, open up and, uh, and then you could see they release they release the next uh, pollen presenter comes out with a bunch of pollen on it. Look, see, there's the, just popping open. What the shit? What an amazing plant. Not very, not very tall, not very, uh, you know, not very noticeable sticking up amongst the uh, surrounding fin balls. But when you get up on top and when you're close to them, holy shit, look at that. Look at those bracts. Look at the bracts on there. Look at those involucral bracts. God damn it, what a banger. Yeah, the whole area is just, just humming with, with insects, with pollinators. God damn, that's a, that's an impressive protea. And again, not that tall, but Jesus Christ, that's, <laughs> we haven't seen it. We haven't seen any protea flowers like that. And there's, there's only a few of them. There's like a, a two dozen, maybe. Could see more down there. So let's take a look at what's actually going on with this uh, highly complex flower, okay? Now see that, uh, that what looks like a little piece of bone, like a little piece of chicken bone right there, that's the actual pollen presenter. And then looking at that white fuzzy thing, again, that is, those are the tepals, not petals or sepals. Uh, they're so weird and they, you know, they're not, it's, they're, there's not two series, if you could even call them a series, you know, so there's not sepals and petals. They're in this thing that's just four, We'll call them four valvate peoples. They come together like a valve. And you can see one of them, it looks like there's only two right there. You can see one of them kind of comes apart like a little string. One looks like a string that's closer to me. And then there's the wider one, which is close to the center of the flower. The wider one is actually three, three fused together. And then the one that, that's closer to me, like a string is just one. So you got four total. You can see just coming like a little rod. Oh, there's a stiff little rod. Pardon my nasty finger, it's all cut up and with the shit. But uh, anyway, so these, that pollen presenter that looks like the chicken bone, like part of a, eventually pops out like so, see? And then you're left with uh, those tepals, okay? Just a little rad, they kind of fall down like so. You could see them all down there. And the anthers are actually on the inside of that white, uh, that white fuzzy rod right there. And then of course there's the pollen presenter. And that pollen presenter, of course, has pollen on it. From those, you could see that one in the back. Look at all the pollen on that. Has pollen on it from being encased within those four valvate tepals. The anthers on the inside of those four valvate tepals facing inwards. Okay, and the inside of that little sack, that little, well, I shouldn't even call it a sack. That's gonna fuck you up too, that's kind of confusing. But you know what I mean, a little white knob. So this, this pollen presenter, which looks like a tooth to a comb, will uh, present pollen for, uh, you know, I don't know, a day or two, what the shit. And then, uh, and then after uh, it's uh, done presenting pollen, it then becomes receptive to pollen and uh, goes into the, quote, female face. And, uh, and then uh, hopefully a pollen grain lands on that, travels down, germinates, sends a pollen tube down that uh, little wishbone thing to the ovule down there, and uh, you get a seed if it's a successful pollination event. And then, you know, when it's all done, all the little bracts and what the shit, the top bracts fall off, everything nice and showy falls off, and you're, you're left with this, like, wooden knob with a whole bunch of, it looks like a bunch of strings on it. And then that is uh, the infructescence, which uh, encloses all the seeds, which has all the seeds in it, 
And then, uh, you know, hopefully, eventually, uh, you know, a fire comes true here, uh, you know, and we'll uh, induce germination in a few of those seeds. But that uh, that warty infrastructure holds all the seeds and uh, just stays attached to the plant. And then, uh, you know, you can see there's an old one right down there. Looks like the uh, infrastructure actually is gone. It's just left with the bracts. But anyway, so there you go. Protea cyanoroides. What the shit? What a magnificent plant. God, what does that thing smell like? Oh, what's the attractant? It smells kind of starchy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily attractive to me, but to each their own. It smells like there's some carbs in there. Let's see, there you go. Looks like, is this guy, he's about to open. He's got a new one coming out. See, there's a spent one. Oh, it's so woody. You know, white, that goddamn white sand. Now, this guy's just about finishing up, just about wrapping up. See, there's the actual seats. See that? Just kind of readily dehiss out of that fruit. Or excuse me, I guess it's a fruit. What do you call it? Infructescence. And uh, there's an individual one. So you can see it's still got that palm presenter attached to it. And uh, once you actually dehiss those seeds from that little tail, that tail of a palm presenter, there they are right there. There's, there's the meat of the seed. You can see they got those little plumos, uh, what look like hairs around them, to help them get around, you know, for the wind dispersal. All just, again, all just readily dehissing out of that fruit, that infructescence as it ages. Now this is a weird one. So this is an invasive member of the uh, Protea family, but this is from the genus Hakea. Look at that wooden fruit, little woody fruit right there. Hakea gibosa. It's a naturalized weed. Look at those needles. Little, little needle-like leaves. Very stiff. God, what a fucking mean plant. Those spines are something else, man. Jesus. And then that little, that little knob. Oh, it looks like a little ass. Gross. Little warty ass. Oh, look, it's an osteospermum with berries. Berry fruits. The berry barn. Sherry's berries. <laughs> berries. Ooh. How does it do? That's pretty weird for a knife. That's pretty weird for a composite, though. Why? Why does it do that? How do the seeds get around? Look at those Akeens. What the shit? A tree osteospermum. Then we got a species of Wackendorphia. Wackendorphia from the kangaroo paw family. Zygomorphic flowers. Look at that. Looks like uh, four stamens. No, three stamens, excuse me. And then a style curved to the side right there. What's going on there, huh? Pretty interesting. Enantio styly. Kangaroo paw family, Hamidoraceae. I've mostly seen in Western Australia. Look at those leaves. Like a palm, corrugated like a palm. Or perhaps an iris. Well, not quite an iris. The whole, uh, the, all the stems and what the shit, the calyx is covered in the fuzz. Again, just like the kangaroo paw family, which gets abused in California horticulture. Overused. Beautiful family, though. Beautiful flowers on this goddamn family. Then we get one species in North America. I've mo but yeah, I've mostly seen it in uh, Western Australia. A lot of diversity there. What do we got here? We got a goddamn orchid over here. Oh. Looks like a species of a cetherium. Look at the pedestals on it. Oh my god. This thing's wild. Yeah, this is a cetherium. See those? You got two nectar spurs on the back of each flower. Let's get up close take a look at that. Two nectar spurs per flower, which uh, the genus Ceterium is notable for. Got quite a few species down here in South Africa. This is a Ceterium odorum. They're all showy like this, though. What a great fucking genus. Ah! Turn around. See that? You see the two? You got two per flower. Weird for the orchids. Two nectar spurs per flower. God, I can't, I can't get over those spurs. The spurs on this thing are, Jesus. Hmm. 
Must there must be nectar down there. Wonder if it's a specialist pollinator or a generalist or just proboscid flies or what. Feels kinda feels kinda rubbery. Leaves leaves kinda feel like a pinguicula without the uh, the sass on top. Oh nice leucospermum. Could be a protea, but it lacks the bracts, see? From the genus protea. And uh doesn't have that, you know, it's not the separate male and female flowers like leucodendron, so. Look at these, looks like uh, extra floral nectaries. Looks like he got some extra floral nectaries on the tips of those leaves. Okay, just lit up. Fun for the sugar birds, for the bird pollinators. And there's those teeples. Four little teeples, you can see the anthers still on some of them. Just come undone with that knobby little pollen presenter. Poking out, which again, the genus Protea doesn't have. It comes comes more to a tapered point. See, now, now there we go. That's that's the type of gladiolus that they used to sell in Dominic's. You know, that's that's the grocery store glad. It's beautiful, but again, it was kind of ruined for me because my ma used to put them in the windows all the time. But look at the oh God! You, I guarantee I wasn't that I wasn't looking this up close at the flower sex parts. When I was young, maybe you know. I remember we had, you know, I do. I do remember we had a porn once. We had old neighborhood neighborhood kids had a porn, and uh, it was analog porn, and we'd roll it up into a tight, uh, you know, roll. We were, when uh, we were not looking at it, and we'd stuff it in the drain pipe of this uh, of this brick building around the corner. <laughs> I think it was like a rec center or some shit. I don't know, but it was it was just heinous, filthy shit. You know, we were probably eleven or twelve. But, uh, you know, I could have been doing this instead. I could have been looking at flower porn. How about that? You know, skip the analog porn. You know, skip a, a copy of Swank and just look at the, look at that. You know, you learn a little bit more about evolution this way. Well, I guess you can learn plenty about human evolution from porn, too. You know, if you really, if you really want to go there, a much more mesic glad than we've seen. Most of the glads we've seen have been more calicortis sized, like a mariposa lily. But they get the wigs, they get the wigs, hey, you brick. Still got some daylight left. Ended up spending a whole afternoon up here. God, what an incredible landscape. All because of those cold ocean currents right off the coast where the Atlantic and the Indian meet. Oh, nice and fucking termite, man. <clears throat> Surprised I haven't eaten that much shit yet. You know, I haven't fallen on my ass too much. Ooh, something smells good. This whole hillside is just covered in flower nectar. You could smell it. Covered in pollinators, too. Well, that's all I got for you this evening. Hopefully, you got something out of that. So much endemism. All these plants just evolving here in this little uh, botanical, uh, quote-unquote, island for a... Uh, however many millions of years, just in that Mediterranean climate, that winter rain, summer dry, relatively mellow in that L shape near the coast, you know? Anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. Have a good rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself, bye.